Kia ora internet and welcome to the final part of the community round robin quilt along. We've finished all the blocks so now it's time to put them together. Now this whole quilt along has been about giving you lots of options and empowering you to make your own design choices in making this quilt. And this section is even more so because there's no pattern for how to finish your quilt. Instead we're just going to each give you our own interpretation of how we put the quilt together and you can pick and choose between them or you can make up something completely your own. It's all up to you. So let's get started and I'll show you how I'm going to finish this quilt. So here's my finished blocks. I had a lot of fun fussy cutting the cornerstones for these ones. It was a great way to use these large print fabrics. You've already seen these blocks. Brenda's inner border gave me so many options for creating variations. These are the blocks I had the most fun with, I think. Customising the mugs with fussy cutting, and then going completely off pattern with the outer borders, making these improvised trees. I wish I'd used a more interesting fabric for the outer borders on these blocks. Those two blocks with the fabrics that read as solid are kind of boring. I've got an idea though for how to fix it. I think I might add a bit of an embellishment to these blocks. Oh, it took me forever to find a layout I liked. Even though I used a pretty limited colour palette, trying to balance the colours and the tonal weight of the blocks across the quilt was hard, and made even harder by the fact that this quilt fills up my entire design wall, so I had to use a step ladder to reach the top row, and move my giant ironing board out of the way so I could see the full quilt. I've used this blue batik spot fabric as the background on all of the blocks and my original plan was to use it for the session as well but I don't actually think there's enough left so I cheated and brought more fabric. Unfortunately the shop had run out of the blue spots but they did have this purple spot which I think is going to work great and then as I was leaving the shop I spotted this fabric and I immediately knew I had to get it so I could fussy cut the cups to be cornerstones. And here's the finished quilt top. As you can see I added rickrack to one of my boring blocks and for the other one I made prairie points from some of the scraps I had left over. I think those extra little touches just add enough interest to make the blocks fit in better with the busyness of the rest of the quilt. The third block I left plain because that fabric's got enough interest in it already, so I think it works without adding anything extra. I really love how this quilt is turning out. I can't wait to see what everyone else has done with their interpretations of the pattern. Okay, so I lied a little bit when I said this was the final video in the series because I ran out of time to actually quilt my quilt top. So that'll have to be another video, which might be a while away because I have got a lot on in the next couple of months. But I'll get to it eventually, like everything else in my unfinished projects pile. <laughs> In the meantime, make sure that you check out Kelly and Michelle and Brenda's videos because they have all got their own versions of how they finish the quilt. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Sew so with Debbie who has been quilting along with us and making her own videos. And she has very much embraced our philosophy of make this quilt your own and has come up with some really creative interpretations of our patterns. So go and check out her videos. This series has been such fun to do and we've already been talking about the fact we'd really love to do something like it again. So watch this space maybe? <laughs> Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment and I will see you next time. Kakite anō internet. Mm -hmm.